Okay, question number 11. Same portfolio as before, but now assume that the correlation between the two assets is positive 1.0. Okay, calculate the standard deviation. Again, the only change is that the correlation between these assets is positive 1.0. Let's start with our formula. WA squared, sigma A squared, plus WB squared, sigma B squared, plus 2 times WA times WB, sigma A, sigma B, correlation between assets A and B, and then we have to take the square root. Okay, Our weights are the same, so 0 0.2 squared times the standard deviation squared, plus 0 0.8 squared times the standard deviation squared, plus 2 times 0 0.2, 0 0.8, 18, 12 times the correlation. And the correlation we're changing to be positive 1.0. Oh. Underneath this radical, we have 12.96. We have 92.16. And we've got 69.12. Giving us a sum, 174.24. Taking the square root, the standard deviation of the portfolio is 13.2. Now, there's two items of note here that are significant. Number one, notice that since the correlation is larger than it was in the previous example, we ended up with a larger standard deviation. And that's consistent with what we know. The greater the correlation, the more positive correlation there is, the larger the standard deviation. The further away from positive one that we get, the more benefits in terms of risk reduction that we would have. Okay. Now, this is also important. Remember, and I'm going to write this down. Remember that there is no risk reduction when the correlation between the two assets, I'll put A and B here, is equal to positive 1.0. We said there is no risk reduction. In this case, and in this case only, the standard deviation of a portfolio is equal to the weighted average of the standard deviation of the assets that make up this portfolio. Only in this case, when the, when the correlation is perfect positive, let's see if that's true. If 20% of our money is invested in asset A, which has a standard deviation of 18, and 80% of our money is invested in an asset that has a standard deviation of 12, the weighted average is 13.20. And notice that is exactly the same thing we get here. So the only time that you would ever calculate the standard deviation of the portfolio to be a weighted average is if the correlation between the assets is perfect positive. Let's look at question 12. Calculate the standard deviation of a two-asset portfolio that consists of the following. Okay, We've got assets C and D, we've got their percentage, and we've got their standard deviation. Now notice this. I gave you the covariance a different way, didn't I? The covariance here is in this decimal form here. All right. So we need to convert one to the other. That is, I either need my all of my standard deviations to be in decimal form, or I need to evaluate my covariance in more of a whole number form. So let's start with our equation. The weight in asset C squared times the standard deviation of C squared plus the weight in asset D squared times its standard deviation squared 
plus 2 times the weight in asset C, the weight in asset D, times the covariance between C and D. We're going to take the square root of that. Okay? So I'm going to go ahead and use these percentage, these decimals. 30% of my money is invested in asset C, which has a standard deviation of 0.11. 70% of my money is invested in asset D that has a standard deviation of 0.19. Plus 2 times 0.3 times 0.7 times my covariance, which was given 0 0.0117. This gives me, underneath the radical, 0 0.001089 plus 0 0.017689 plus 0 0.004914. Gives me the square root of 0 0.0. Two three six nine two, which is point fifteen thirty nine, which is equivalent to fifteen point three nine percent. Let's try another one. Calculate the standard deviation of this two asset portfolio that consists of the following. Here we don't have the percentages, but we're given the values, the dollar values, and we're given that the correlation between the two assets is negative 0.16. That's the correlation between these assets. First thing we need to do is calculate the weights, because we don't have the weights, the percentage weights. We know that asset E, we've got $2,000, and asset F, we have $3,000. So we've got a com total of $5,000 invested. Okay? Well, two-fifths of our money, 2,000 of our 5,000, is invested in asset E. So that's 40% of our money. 3,000 of our 5,000 is invested in asset F, which gives us 60%. So there are our weights. Let's plug it into our formula. WE squared times the standard deviation of E squared plus WF squared times the standard deviation of F squared plus 2 times WE, WF, the standard deviation of E, the standard deviation of F times the correlation between E and F. And we'll take that square root. It's really a plug and chug at this point, folks. 40% of our money is squared times 18 squared. 60% of our money squared times 12 squared plus 2 times 0 0.4, 0 0.6, 18, 12, and our correlation of negative 0.16. Underneath the radical, we've got 51.84 plus 51.84 again minus 16.5888. Gives me the square root of 8709, which is 9.33%.